Hello there, my very good friends. I'm Andy Murray. This is Michael Hamlet. It's the news. This is the news, all of that stuff. But it's a bit of a different format today um, because the, there really is no point in talking about anything else uh, no. apart from CM Punk. That footage that aired on last night's episode of Dynamite, the reactions, the ramifications, the motivations, the other Asians, whatever Asian you can add yeah. to all of this. Uh, we're going to go through all of it, hopefully in uh, as nice a way as possible. And then at the end, we've got some Twitter questions that aren't all about CM Punk. So if you want to hear about a different topic, what? <laughs> you, know, you know where to go. Um, but yes, so this was obviously the big thing. Uh, the marketing focus of last night's AEW Dynamite mm -hmm. was all about the infamous backstage footage of the Jack Perry CM Punk confrontation at All In 2023 that led, of course, to CM Punk being dismissed by AEW with cause. He was fired, a disciplinary committee decreed that what happened in that confrontation was enough for him to be let go from the company. It's been one of the wrestling topics of the past year. It will continue to be for ages and ages. Mm -hmm. And then we all saw the footage last night, or at least the clip that they chose to air, the segment that they chose to air. Uh, I'll just do a quick play-by-play. -play. Yeah. I'll get some initial thoughts, and then we'll dive, we'll deep dive okay. into this a little bit more. So the Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, they queued it up. They were talking to the camera. They were using this as a means of promoting their upcoming match with FTR at the Dynasty. Dynasty, however you say that word, <laughs> pay-per-view. Uh, they said that All In was the biggest show in company history, which is correct. Uh, and they kind of framed their match with FTR on their show as the biggest of their career, the most important, best tag team in the world would be determined there. Um, all of that stuff. They were kind of uh, using, it. They, they spoke about how it was like a distraction, like it rattled them a little mm. bit before the match. Um, Nicholas Jackson, in what a very clear shot at the recent Ariel Hawani uh, podcast appearance from CL Punk. Punk, uh, was wondering if FDR had masterminded it. Uh, and, and Matthew, this was the shot, uh, or was it the other way around? Have I got the names the wrong way around? One of them one of them accused them of masterminding it. Yeah, no, it was yeah. Nicholas that accused masterminding. Matthew was the one saying like, Oh, about, you can't do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can't, come on, we have to stop this and yeah. cut the shot and then go again. Sort of it's thing. unprofessional yeah. to make these accusations yeah. on the podcast, which is obviously mm -hmm. a dig at the, the MMA hour. Uh, interview. Uh, they said they didn't have the time to prepare to their match. It put the locker room in disarray, the scrap between CM Punk and Jack Perry, uh, and the FTR's win should have an asterisk against it. And then they rolled the footage. It's about a minute in total. It's a bit grainy, of course, it's a security camera, but it is quite clear what happened. Mm -hmm. um, there's no sound, none of that. And it's shot from this one perspective. It, it shows Jack Perry standing backstage, uh, gorilla position, presumably. Yeah. Um, there's loads of people around. There's a row of monitors over, over on one side. There's a bunch of people going around. You can see CM Punk approaching Jack Perry. They say a few words to one another. They talk a bit. Obviously, you have no idea what they say to one another. Uh, Punk, in his MMA hour, uh, insinuated that he was like, why are you doing this internet BS? Yeah. Uh, and the, the the Jack showed him some attitude back, but we can't hear that, so we you know we can't corroborate what Punk said in the interview with regards to that part. At least uh, Punk initiates the physicality. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he shoves sure, him. Mm -hmm. He appears to put him into a guillotine, mm -hmm. uh, which he said I just choked him a little he bit. He did, yeah. Uh, on the interview, blah 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 blah. And then you see uh, Samoa Joe and Hook, I believe, okay. step in to mm -hmm. kind of separate them. Uh, Punk at this point, like some monitors got knocked over. Uh, Punk appears to lean over those monitors and yell at someone, um, or at least you know. His body language is not positive. Um, might be Tony Khan. I Those, think that's three monitors and an arm reaches over. Yeah. That's their version of the gorilla position. We're all very familiar with in WWE. If it's not Tony Khan, it's one of the two, three people that sit in that position. Exactly. And Tony Khan is there as one of them. Yeah. So if it's not him, it's the person right next to him. You know, and it leads into what we then learn about. Punk and Tony Khan afterwards. Exactly. And, all, so. and Punk has previously claimed that he tried to quit yeah. in that moment, uh, of course. So 
uh, yeah, if he's a reliable narrator or not. Some of that was proven in this. Some mm. of it, it's still a bit difficult to tell. You see Jerry Lynn. Uh, he helps Usher Punk away. Malachi Black just strolls into the scene as well. Uh, Chris Hero looks <laughs> absolutely despondent. It's already like, it's, you know, it's already one of these things where everything becomes a meme. Yeah. Like Chris Hero is just, just like, oh my, get a surrender cobra in immediately. They're yeah, like, like hell. That, that, you know, that was technically his on-screen debut. Yeah. For <laughs> I love Chris Hero. I'm so who sorry, doesn't? Chris. Who doesn't? Um, but yeah, like uh, before they move into the next segment as well. Speaking of reactions, Tony Schiavone looks like he wants the world to open up. Yeah. Um, he's previously said that he doesn't give an f about any of this. He just wants to move on from it. And so I can imagine, and this is me speculating, that AEW's inability to move on from this maybe, mm -hmm. maybe got on him a little bit. I don't want to, you know, put faults yeah. in his head or whatever. Um, FTR then cut a promo on it, and they they did use it to generate heat from their match. Um, okay, so before we dive into like some specifics, uh, look, we're we're CM Punk fans, both of us. Yeah. We don't hide that mm -hmm. at all. Um, but. He clearly instigated the physical mm -hmm. contact yep. in this situation. Uh, and we look, we've always said here that although we enjoy the man's fiction, if he started the physical contact in front of his boss, yeah. he's in the wrong. You can't fight at work. Yeah. I know wrestling stuff happens and we hear about locker rooms. In front of your boss yeah, as well. You can't, you can't do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. How do you feel about all of this? Well, I'm doing the ups and downs for AEW Dynamite for whatculture.com forward slash WB, which you can check out later on today. And this falls into both because of course okay. it does, right <laughs> like because let's try and you know like you're the best for this uh, i'm substantially weaker normally let's apply a bit of nuance to this if we can I'm not the best at anything. uh like there are obvious ups and downs to this whole situation i want to talk start with tony shivani for me because he's an f word there i want to use another one format it made my stomach twist when as ftr walked to the ring he had to say this is what we had in the format oh, God, we all yeah. thought the same thing right a depressed tony shivani saying it's not on the format we all went to WCW's dying days. Yeah. It was impossible not to. Tony Schiavone and Taz, while poor Excalibur was teeing this segment up, didn't want to look at us as the viewer. Yeah. Didn't want to look at us at the monitor. And for the first time, looked to me, speculatively, as if they did not want to be present for this, yeah. any of this. And that was this like terse reminder that ultimately what you're watching here isn't really about uh, AEW as a promotion, and despite their best efforts, I don't even think it's really about the Young Bucks and FTR. Again, despite the efforts of the wrestlers to fold this into the uh, the fiction and the promotion for Dynasty and whatnot, this is about a, a very personal and at times petty war of words and war of what really happened between CM Punk and Tony Khan. And it's a billionaire's playground pro wrestling, so mm -hmm. he can use that. What did both Will Ospreay later on in this show and CM Punk and Ariel Awani say? Very expensive television time to do this, right? Yes. I want to go back to Will Ospreay in a second. Apologies for scattered thoughts. But, like, it was impossible to disconnect from the facts of this and buy into the fiction, despite the best and impressive efforts of the Young Bucks and FTR. You couldn't. You, you know, as a sort of informed wrestling fan, as we all like to pretend to be, and you are if you're watching this video, it was impossible to disconnect from the reality and buy into the, oh, the Young Bucks are mad at FTR. You yeah. know, yeah. no, nonsense. You, you could try, but it wasn't going to happen. You were too invested in the shoot to care about the work. And ultimately, Tony Khan, as a wrestling fan, always like probably knew that. But it was yeah. more important presumably to him for the company to get this video out to offer some sort of rebuttal. I have sympathy for him in that respect. I think AEW is in something of a lose-lose situation. This might all be bubble stuff, but after CM Punk's Ariel Helwani interview, if AEW were to ignore that, it would allow his the courage of CM Punk convictions to simply be the truth of the matter. Sure. When they themselves had this video to say, eh, not quite. You not told, so much, pal. You told a version of the story, but we see it a little bit differently. So I understand that. And the other side of that sort of conversation, if they address it, which they have done, yeah. you're left with a situation where it does come across as a petty bit of television. Yeah. So I just don't think they're in a position where they could really win. And ultimately, Tony Khan's elected to sort of plow through with this. Interestingly, Will Ospreay, on the very same broadcast, mere minutes later, in fact, mm -hmm. comes out and gives Triple H a bit of what for, for some comments he perceives to not like. That was a reminder 
that the wrestlers are always punching up when yes. they're going for the bosses, when they're going for the billionaires. These are the workers, the bumpers, the people that put their lives on the line and the people that have got to earn while the going's good. People who are held to these ridiculous, stacked against them, independent contractor terms when they're expected to behave like employees. All the time, right? So when Osprey does that to Triple H, you are reminded of the balance of power having just watched it go the other yeah. way with Tony Khan, using all of his power and influence to do that to CM Punk. And it was just for me that like, ah, oh, if, if you're gonna have it one way around and try and be the baby face, it's got to be the Osprey yeah. way, not the oh, Punk yeah. way. And I just thought as a result of that and the whole way it played out, uh, AW couldn't win, but didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I, I know that's all over the shop, but yeah. I completely agree. My my defining feeling watching this, and please let me know if you disagree in yeah. the comment section. If you and are, people in, will. People yeah, will. Oh, yeah, this is going to be opinions. this is going to be a feisty one. Um, but my overwhelming thought coming out of this was that this this video and everything else changed nobody's mind. Yeah. If you're a person who's had their mind changed, please let us know. But like, I feel like the people who thought that what CM Punk did was right and justified, mm -hmm. and that he was just sticking up for himself uh, and all, all of that. Um, and a lot of those people who agree with Punk will be on the AEW's dying death knell kind of brigade. I think that those people will feel emboldened. And also, I feel that the people who think that no, no, CM Punk was completely in the wrong. Um, Tony is justified in airing this, all of that stuff, like more, defensive of the company side, I think that they will feel emboldened yeah. as well. So to that end, what have you really accomplished? Um, if you were a cynic of AEW and their handling of the Punk situation and what Punk did, and you tuned into this, you probably left going, hell yeah, CM Punk. Yeah. You're not coming back to watch the show next week if you don't already. I don't think. We'll see what the rating does earlier and what it does next week. Because, you know, it might pop a nice little number this week, but if that car doesn't carry over next week, mm -hmm. you haven't done anything productive here, really. Um, so for me, the whole situation is, uh, it does require a sense of nuance for sure. Like obviously you can't assault people at work, no. right? You can't shove people, put them in a guillotine. And yeah, it's a pretty mild fracas, right? They're not brawling, they're not taking chunks out of each no. other or whatever, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, he did that in front of his bloody boss. Mm -hmm. uh, and look, I am a huge CM Punk fan. If you tune into the videos every day, uh, you know that. But we also acknowledge on this channel because we're, we uh, explore the full, or try to explore the full range of everything that this man uh, is a deeply flawed individual. Yeah. And I believe in this situation, obviously we don't know exactly what was said between these two men, that he was in the wrong. Uh, now, there's a lot to consider uh, even going beyond that. Uh, we'll just go through some of the considerations. Let's go through some of the reactions okay. first, why not? Punk himself, has been on his Instagram stories. Um, he's posted a picture of George W. Bush uh, with the caption, um, mi well, mission accomplished. Oh yeah, above. the infamous shot of him on the, like the intrepid, yeah. whatever it was, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so he's trying to frame this as, yeah. hey, I got to you and you there did this. There were same punk chants in the building. There were. And the Young Bucks came out later on. Which there were. Which can't have been what they want, you know, like, yeah. and this is the other thing, sorry to cut in by no, the way, no. but to try and weave this into the fiction, which AW did here, right, if you really think about this, the Young Bucks as the heel authority figures embracing Jack Perry means that they're bringing him back as a heel, yeah. which means that makes Punk the baby face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And such why he got the chance he got. And again, just to sort of try and sort of rationalize this, because I understand that pro wrestling for years and years and years has like tried to use reality and weave it into the fiction. There are multiple ways to skin this cat. What you want is wrestling to be fake and feel real not be, not like sort of have reality and then try and make it fake. Yeah. Unfortunately for the books right now, I would say CM Punk and Drew McIntyre is the best example of that in all of wrestling. Yeah, for that sure. Is fiction being made to feel as real as it gets. When those two are on screen, I'm scared for the fight, but you know they're working together, yeah, right? Exactly. This is the opposite and generating that kind of opposite emotional response. Yeah, 100%. And uh, there's been some reactions from some WWE people. Uh, actually, to speak to the arena chance, there's footage of it 
uh, doing the rounds of uh, the arena's reaction to the footage being aired. Mm. And there's there's a lot of CM Punk chants in there. Yeah. There's a lot of booze as well. Like, look, it's a combustible, divisive situation where two sides are bouncing off each other like this. We were there at Wembley. That was happening when Punk was still working for yeah. the company. Yeah. He was like a modern John Cena in terms of that mixed reaction, wasn't it? You know he was. Him? Like, he really was, um, particularly after Brawl Out and yeah. all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, Cedric Alexander posted a reaction, Sean Spears as well. Um, Ariel Helwani, this features into uh, some other, another point here, uh, said, not very nice. Some lawyer out of Jacksonville got my account locked momentarily and DMCA'd the video I posted. So he got struck basically, uh, which contained CCTV footage and interview footage from my show. Um, so they've been going around and they've been striking. They've actually removed the, the security footage from their own YouTube upload. Really? Segment. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So it's, it's really jarring. If you go and look at that YouTube clip right now, the young it's just the Young Bucks talking ah. and then the FDR segment. Um, so there you go. Um, they didn't say CM Punk's name at all throughout of this. Yeah. Like he, like, so I get, I get, I, well, I get, there's probably legal reasons for that, right? Um, but yeah, this whole thing is just, it's a, a deeply complicated mess. Um, I think that people will draw a lot of assumptions about TK. Tony, TK, like he's my name. <laughs> Tony, Tony, he's like a billionaire. He's not his name. Um, like, should he have felt threatened for his life in this situation, all of this? Well, look, we saw him leaning over the, the, the table and, and yeah. stuff. And, and more and, might have occurred off this camera. 100%. This one moment from a difficult day, wasn't it? You know, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's Tony's prerogative. Mm -hmm. Look, whether you like CM Punk or not, uh, the, he has no point fighting people, yep. uh, no problem fighting people. And also, he's trained at that. Yes, he was crap in the UFC, but that's against trained professional yep. fighters or whatever. Um, the average guy, like Tony Khan, he's not a large man. I don't think he's, I don't think he's trained or anything. Um, if I had an angry, trained person shouting at me, I'd probably feel a bit scared myself, mm -hmm. um, having watched all of this kind of unfold in front of you uh, in such a way. Um, my overwhelming feeling, is that this does nothing for Jack Perry and his return. It does nothing for the Bucks versus FTR, as we've discussed. I don't think it does anything positive for AEW. Mm. And on top of all of this, what was trending number one after all this? CM Punk. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah. This thing is all over the place. Mm. It's dominating Reddit, which is a good aggregator of what's going on in wrestling. It's all over Twitter, all over the news sites, all over YouTube like us. Um, I don't really think anyone wins coming out of this, right? Because Punk has just been proven that he started this. But then at the same time, I don't really think keeping his employment was a key factor in this guy's mind. Not when by he then. Did no. All of this, right? So, man, uh, I, I did say before this that I don't think this is going to help AEW in any way whatsoever. And I still stand by that. Uh, obviously, we're recording this early on Thursday morning after it airs Wednesday night. Everyone's going to be interested to see the number. It's not often now that ratings conversation is very interesting yeah post wednesday night wars but this one's a, a one that everybody's going to be looking at the quarter hour breakdown it's going to be interesting to see the spike and then the drop off or whatever but what i will say on from an aw point of view is that if they have been able to generate interest around this it is so key that in the aftermath you maintain that interest by just putting your best foot forward again because last night didn't feel best foot forward. It wasn't subjectively a great dynamite wrapped around this huge explosive talking point. And what they could have really done with beyond uh, the CM Punk thing and beyond quite a strong Will Ospreay promo was a show that reflects what their 2024 sure. has been about. You know, like if this was the defining story of 2023, the defining story of 2024 is that AEW have very quietly turned the ship around, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the ratings are not reflecting it necessarily, but the pay-per-view buys are solid. The buildings are starting gradually to fill back up again. The monthly or nearly monthly pay-per-view cycle hasn't dampened the quality of the in-ring. Mm -hmm. AEW, this new Where We Wrestle, sorry, is that, I've got that wrong. We're the best wrestle. We're the best wrestle. They, like, they're leaning into that, as they should, because WWE, being their best self in that direction, should force AEW to be their best self exactly. in that direction. Exactly. This is where these hands are, is where wrestling should be if you're going to have a market leader and a challenger brand, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, they should be different. And where I feel sorry for somebody who isn't really directly related to any of this, but tried to be last week to be a, a locker room leader, I feel sorry for Adam Copeland, because mm. last week he was maybe not sent out there, maybe he has to go out there, but he went out there at the start of the Dynamite in the immediate aftermath of Punk's comments and basically presented AEW as a pro-wrestling utopia, as a place that wrestling is better for its existence. He listed a bunch of people he wanted to face, he wanted to put over the 
elite, inclusive of Cody Rhodes. Just to say that why AEW was why he wanted to finish up his career. It was different. It was wrestling's future rather than being buried in wrestling's past. And then seven days later, he's kind of made a hypocrite by all of this. Yeah. You know, and I kind of feel sorry for him and other people that now want to say, come on, guys, the past is the past. Get over it. Let's live in the moment. And this episode was anything but that. Yeah. It's I relitigating. It, like, it's relitigating by choice rather than by those weird days where you wake up on Twitter and be like, people are relitigating CM Punk yeah, today. Yeah. AEW have chosen to do this and it like remains to be seen how effective that'll be for them. You know, we're just a couple of idiots on the internet. What do we yeah, know? This but is it. it remains like to be seen, I think, as a long-standing wrestling fan when you've seen this fail for promotions so many times in the past, you tend to have to learn from history lest you be doomed to repeat exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And... Um... I do think that, look, we love the chaos. We're, we're yeah. very open about that. Captivating to watch, by the way. 100%. My heart was beating out of its chest 100%. watching it. Like, it was you, know, like, yeah. you couldn't get closer to it, could you? you know, nah. it's like, it was like that on the For You tab. Those yeah. Twitter accounts you don't follow, but it's like, check out this dark explosion. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I think I will actually. Yeah. I didn't choose to follow this, but now it's come yeah. to me. I will watch I'll have this a uh, landslide yeah. down the mountain or whatever. Um, or this guy poking an alligator in yeah. the face. Uh, and I'll, that's quite an appropriate analogy, actually, isn't it? Um, <laughs> a man poking a bear. Right there. What's going to happen? Oh, the bear's just savaged his face yeah. off. Yeah, the bear's just killed him. Swipe that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, hit me with it, baby. <laughs> um, through all of this, right, I, th I think the AEW's best... Um, there is a Twitter question about this that we'll talk about. I think AEW now just needs to show its work. Yeah. Um, I do think it needs to move beyond this stuff. It, increasing... And look... Again, like I feel like it's important important to point this preference out because comments just get framed as biased and anti this and pro that all the time. I prefer AEW's product to WWE's ninety percent of the time. Um, I don't think I have a favorite wrestling promotion in twenty twenty four, but I prefer the week to week in AEW. So let's make that. Uh, very, very clear to start off with. But I also feel at the moment like the promotion as a whole is kind of behaving like a gotten to teenager yeah. uh, in the aftermath of this uh, this this interview with Ariel Hawani in particular that has unquestionably, for me, caused us to end up where we are. I also think that they uh, might have just condemned themselves to a future of CM Punk chants whenever the Young Bucks and Jack Perry are on screen. The blight of WWE programming for many, many years. If that mm -hmm. happens, it's kind of their own fault. We're gonna wrap up the CM Punk stuff. Well, we're not, because there's a Twitter question and it's the <laughs> first one. Uh, but we do have some questions on WrestleMania and stuff like that as well. But I'm sure you've already done it. But if you haven't, please let us know where you stand down below. And just be civil. Like, don't be, don't be mean, nasty to each other. It's just wrestling at the end of the day. Um, but for me, ultimately, what AEW should do now is to make Dynasty one of the best pay-per-views in company history and probably just move on from all of this. Yeah, like I like WWE's week-to-week -week in contrast to Murray's take on AEW. So when we finish this video, we're going to go and have a shoot fight in Gorilla and do separate programs <laughs> on MMA podcasts about what really happened, don't we? Yeah, that's like, exactly our it. Our versions of the story are going to get out there until the water culture security footage gets aired on the yeah, channel. I've already got, got Helwani on deck, so you're going to have to go on something. <laughs> Winner buys the other plastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've done that I'm already. already. down, yeah. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section below. It's the big issue of the day. We're not going to cover any other news stories on this video because it would just get swallowed up. Oh yeah, Drew hasn't re-signed yet, eh? Go. There's one fight for select to keep it linked to the phone. Uh, uh, rest, <laughs> rest in peace, Aki Bono as well. All right, like, Aki yeah, Bono, yeah. So the, you know this like uh, Aki Bono is such an interesting figure mm -hmm. in pro wrestling. Yep. Obviously, most people remember the WWE stuff, but like if you go and watch some of his like work in Japan, there's some really good like Kento Miyahara had a great match with him. Um, big guys that can you big black like the, it's a, the unbelievable genre of pro wrestler. Aki Bono was absolutely one of them. Big boys rule. Man. Yeah, rest in peace, Aki Bono. Uh, on to our Twitter questions for the day. Bunch of good stuff, most of it about punk. I've got one CM Punk question, and then we're going to talk about WrestleMania week All right. a little bit, because we're both back. We're back, baby. Does it sound like we've been away? Yeah, baby. <laughs> baby. Does it sound like I've been screaming yeet? <laughs> and yeah! Oh, yeah! Non-stop for seven days. Well, shoot. Uh, Aaron Whitelaw has been on, uh, saying, 
with CM Punk reframing the backstage fight and controlling the narrative, was there anything AEW could have done to defend themselves other than by showing the footage? Well, yeah, I suppose we covered that a little bit. I did feel yeah. like they were kind of in a lose-lose situation here regardless. Not least because um, we don't know, we never do because we're in it. We don't know how in the bubble this was. Was Punk's interview with Helwani in the bubble? Was AEW's promotion of this footage in the bubble? Was the story itself in the bubble? It's so hard, and I say as two people in it, and Aaron and everybody else probably watching this, we're ensconced in this, right? Like, if you speak to your loved ones or friends about pro wrestling, as I have done sort of about things relating to WrestleMania, to start on a CM Punk story requires all of the All Out context yeah. and about... Talk about, you could go back years trying to explain CM Punk, and for the most part, he's just not, I love him, the punk is my guy, but like he's not that rock, John Cena, Steve Austin, Hogan figure, mm -hmm. so you've got to like dig quite deep. So we never really know how much penetrates the bubble and is just our daft wrestling thing more this than is it is. So you'd, were AEW like in the wrong to address it? Possibly, but did they see enough discourse after a while that they might have believed it was the right thing to do? Absolutely. I don't think there was a way, like like even last week when Adam Copeland probably had the best intentions, a lot of people were still negging him for oh, a bit yeah. of a, like, oh, there's a rah-rah speech. Yeah. yeah, like even that came across as a little bit gotten to, and that was supposed to be taking the positive. It was supposed away to be the opposite, it. right? You know, so I just I don't think I don't think AEW could win, but equally, I don't know. You watch Punk's Punk to me retelling that. Like, did Helwani say he put a side by side of his interview with the footage, and that's he what used the straight. footage? Yeah, like. Yeah. I think, right, and again, maybe this is coming from the, the pro-punk side, but again, as you've pointed out, people will just be stronger in their resolve off the yeah, back of this. Yeah. Who hasn't told a story about a situation they experienced through their own eyes, only to hear it told by somebody else, and be like, oh, I guess maybe it did go that way. Yeah. Like, I think that's quite normal human behavior to yeah. think something went, as I know punk's got a history of, like, he's a cult of personality, it's part of his, MO to be that kind of a lightning rod. It's as you say, it's a Watson all performer. I think you love him for his flaws as much as his positives, you know, that's who CM Punk is. But like he was telling the story of a fight and I've witnessed the odd fight in real life and then remembered my version of it and it might have been slightly different to somebody else's. Yeah. That's quite human. Yeah. I think, I think I'd, like, I've, Punk didn't say anything so wildly off base that when I saw the footage, I was like, well, that's complete bollocks. Like, yeah, obviously he told his version of it, but it wasn't that far off what we saw. No, exactly. Like, the, the only things that obviously you can't really pass judgment on are what was said. It, yeah, you can't hear it. Um, and, and, all and of, of course, Punk would play down that he was the first one yeah. to physically attack because he yeah. probably felt genuinely like he had no other option. Yeah, and then you he know, escalated like, it. And yeah. It's like, yeah, um, I think to answer Aaron's question as well. Yeah, sorry, um, there was no, an answer in there, I think. No, so. at all. I, uh, I think that uh, the best retaliation would have just been to do nothing, hmm. right? I wouldn't have even attempted to re control the narrative or anything like that. Um, uh, I, I think this was wholly unnecessary. Look, uh, I, if I'm AEW and I s watch the Helwani interview and, and see the things that Punk has said about Tony in particular, and the company and how it's run and all of this stuff, I would sit there and go, yeah, we need to deal with this. We need to try and try and uh, uh, realign the conversation a little bit. So I understand why they did it, 100%. And I appreciate that it's easy for me as someone who has nothing to do with this yeah. situation uh, to, to comment on what they've done. But I wouldn't have done any of this. I wouldn't have done the Adam Copeland promo. Um, although I don't criticize Copeland for doing it. Definitely not. Um, I wouldn't have done any of that stuff. Uh, I can understand uh, things like, I mean, I think you can treat Will Ospreay responding to Triple H as not a different thing, yeah. right, entirely. Um, that's a different scenario. It's but, fell on the same week where it feels like yeah. one dynamite is taking loads of shots yeah. at like an on-fire Fed when that's not really the case. For sure, like, uh, for sure. And look, the Fed, if it's the Fed taking a shot at, at someone in AEW, which Triple H was doing yeah. to Will Ospreay, I think that's a different matter. But I wouldn't have done any of this punk stuff. I wouldn't have uh, shown the footage. I wouldn't have used it to build storylines. What I would have done is I would have taken that new tagline, where the best wrestle, mm. and I would have lived up to it. I would have sat there and I would have produced the best possible wrestling shows that this company can possibly do uh, and I would build the dynamite and I would leave fans salivating in anticipation of that pay-per-view and then on the night I would do everything I can to make sure that that is one of the greatest pay-per-views in the company. Well again to that point you would what last night's dynamite seemed to do was an effort to try and prove CM Punk wrong 
why not listen to some of his other comments and prove him right? Punk on that Helwani interview was saying, look, Tony Khan's a nice guy, but he's not a businessman. He's not got a business there. If you want to go there and have five-star matches, great, but it's not a business, right? Those comments were kind of left alone because of the fight talk, right? Prove Punk right. Like, if this really is a billionaire's playground, good. It's not our money, yeah. right? Go out there. If like, if Punk, as a wrestler and as a contracted worker, wants to earn money in a business that he feels is thriving, maybe AEW isn't for him. But what did he also say it was? A place where wrestlers want to have fun with their friends and have five-star matches. Do that. What the like, hell's wrong with that? Exactly, exactly. Right? Prove him right for that as a way to sort of get your own kind of um, optics victory yeah. out of it. Yeah. Chase, as you say, chase that. Instead. If, if CM Punk thinks you're just a company that chases a claim, Good, chase, Good. That chase claim. the acclaim and entertain exactly. the hell out of all of us with your best foot forward. Exactly. It's definitely a way to do it. And yeah, like, just show your work mm -hmm. at the end of all of this. And I do hope that that's what we're heading towards. I fear that now we're going to get the Jack Perry scapegoat character coming in and he's it's going to end up being this whole thing where the crux of these characters is, is this... Uh, incident and the footage and all of this stuff and I do worry that they'll be followed around by CM Punk chants wherever they go. I hope that's not the case. Man's suffered enough and he's in House of Torch. Yeah, I do all right. <laughs> what greater punishment? That's, I was going to say that's it, isn't it? Right? Yeah, maybe the Rikers Island of pro wrestling. Yeah, who, really, who really got punished? Jack Perry or CM <laughs> Punk in this situation? Uh, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about something different really quick to just wrap this video up today. Uh, Matt Ryan has been on asking what was the most unexpected highlight of WrestleMania weekend for you? We are both <sighs> over... In Gosh. Philly, of course, but what was your unex unexpected highlight? Uh, I Not mean, one about peaks and pits after this. So. Yeah, it's one from a list of about 400. I'll tell you what I'll go with, because there is a million things, and I feel like over the coverage over the next 12 months, we'll all be sharing our stories and memories as they come up. But one for me is an unexpected one, because it's never a show I particularly enjoyed to, uh, to watch from home uh, in the WrestleMania weekend coverage. But I would recommend everybody, if you ever get the chance to attend a Bloodsport live mm. in person, for a show that when you're watching at home feels very very repetitive and it's kind of weird in its design like it's all work but let's pretend it's the shootiest version of a work live it kind of works like genuinely it does that then it's appropriate that CM Punk was in the crowd for that well indeed yeah he was kind of <laughs> he was uh, taking notes in case he ever had to go again and throw a hand <laughs> but um yeah like it the, obviously the aesthetic is well set up with the ring posts only being up and the ropes not and the rule set being established yeah. and that, that thing that Josh Barnett loves where the wrestlers all come out and stand at the front. And... I love Josh Barnett. On TV, a bit silly yeah. and a bit like, and then, the, and then the bell rings and you've got like Dolph Ziggler doing, uh, well, excuse me, Nick Nemeth doing a zigzag in a shoot fight. But, <laughs> but, right, in spite of all of that, in person, you kind of buy into it a little bit. The wrestlers look super serious. They want it, you know, um, the prize, as much as it's just, a kayfabe victory like every other match you're going to watch that weekend does have that air of legitimacy yeah. about it. They do well to establish it in the building. Will I watch Bloodsport on a camera again? I still don't know, but it would be one I would recommend anybody get, if they ever get the chance to when you're in town for WrestleMania, give it a go. Especially because it's for a lot of people, it was for me this year, the first thing you see, so you're as you're just jazzed up for the physicality, and when somebody's like drilling somebody with hammer blows, oh like, yeah, the business. If you watch it like after WrestleMania, you won't give a toss. It's like where's Jay Uso? <laughs> well, like, it's the first thing you watch. Like it's great. Like that that feeling, that like first flesh, you know, of a chop, whatever. Good stuff. Sells out every single year. Yeah, it well. does. Good stuff. So there you go. Uh, unexpected highlights for me. I've got two. Uh, the Dead Man. The Dead Man. First of all, look, I was uh, when when those interferences started uh, piling up in the main event I like everyone else expected Steve Austin and I wanted Steve Austin because yeah. I've never been there for an Austin pop mm -hmm. uh, in person so when the but like and look I'm not the biggest Undertaker guy in the world I'm not as crit critical of him as uh this guy, uh, but uh, you know, I'm, I love him now. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pick card carrying member of the BSK. <laughs> I respect the business. Want to get my bones? Get a crate of beer for the boys. Um, but when the gong sounded, I lost my ass. Yeah. I had to wink. And this, and you look at him now, and it's just like. He's just an old dude with a, with a, a, a do-rag uh, that says, uh, I'll make you famous, boy, or whatever it was. Six feet under. Uh, Three quarters of shoe. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he, like, he, like, yeah, he eliminated the final boss with one joke slab. Sure did. And it's so silly, but you just get into these things in the building. Another one, like, I don't give a toss about the, the awesome truth, but when they won the tag titles, I lost my friggin' mind. Oh, I've been like, manifesting. It's that uh, Drew McIntyre, is it? 
prayed for this and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, infectious energy of live pro wrestling. Yeah. You don't go to these shows and be a stick in the mud. You, mm -hmm. you get into it, you match the crowd. Uh, so yeah, it's it's our truth and the Undertaker for me. <laughs> the <laughs> legends. Oh, the dead man interfering in the <laughs> You know, people say that makes no sense in storyline, but if you really think about it, the blood line just don't respect this business. I put Yoko in a casket, I threw Rikishi off the cage. I got hit through with a bloodline. Yeah, these Samoans. All right. And Cam looks for the head shrinkers in Europe. Except when we was playing ball. Oh, don't get me started on the Samoan swap team. Speaking of the BSK, that reminds me of another one. I saw Savio Vega as part of Los Bariqua at March, <laughs> Mark Hitchcock Memorial Show. They were fighting the FBI, and the FBI had a mystery partner, and the mystery partner was Deanna Barazzo. <laughs> she hey, came out giving it a full FBI. It was class, man. It was fantastic. Really good. Uh, our final question comes from Crispy's Crafts. Uh, I would like to know. <laughs> Morning, gents. Uh, we do this around the dinner table, uh, but what's your pit and your peak of Mania Weekend? Also, really looking forward to watching the live show yeah that'll be up soon oh, my peak God. was our live show yeah. uh, and Cody Rhodes winning the belt and also seeing The Rock uh, he was hilarious on yeah, Raw great, like the shut the F up on Raw like what a pop oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Raw, I forgot about that. shut the F up now <laughs> you bunch of trash incredible uh, Pitt uh, Jimmy versus <laughs> Jay beyond Jay's intro uh, entrance was was really whack yeah uh, Dalton Castle versus Johnny TV was horrendous uh, oh, so on, on the Ring of Honor show. But yeah, what you got? Uh, I would have to go... I don't know if I, I do go with the Usos matches because I've tried to explain this before. Like, I, as long as AEW is firing, I can tolerate my WWE matches not living up to a certain standard. If if the characters are as over as they are and Jey Uso's... Like, I can't think of a better example in all of wrestling of what WWE is amazing at versus what they care less about. Mm. And the spear on night two almost made up for it. That spear off the stage spear was better the than the entirety of their match. Like, I, I broadly agree, but I think there needs to be a baseline. It was terrible, right? It, it needs was to, terrible, it, yeah. like, if it's just a bit meh mm -hmm. or kind of bad, I thought this was whack. It like, was terribly whack. I, uh, I, I don't know if this is a. Like, night one, I still don't think it was a particularly good show. I had an amazing time. Um, like it's WrestleMania, like the the spectacle is what it is for a reason, and you get drawn into the magic of it all. And like I'm a sucker for Fed production anyway, so this is the best. Yeah. It's WrestleMania is the best exhibition of what they the do. Biggest and the baddest. Yes, yeah, is it? But like I think Night One was a particularly amazing card, and like uh, not for the first time we experienced how difficult it is sometimes getting out of a ginormous stadium. And when it was like really tough getting out of there at the end of the big show, I didn't initially feel particularly like I'd watched a WrestleMania that will age all that well. Like the highs were enormous. Last couple of minutes of the Gunther Sami Zayn match, last couple of minutes of the main event. But I, yeah, I'm looking back. I, you know, I saw 58 wrestling matches mm. last week and none of them from night one would make my top five. So I just, yeah, WrestleMania night one probably wasn't it for me, but night two was almost as good as a show that WWE can put on. There you go. So yeah. Video done by...